Well, hello for you. Welcome back. You survived Unit 1, and now we're on to Unit 2. Uh, we're going to talk today about dividing polynomials. And so our goal here is I can divide polynomials using long division and or synthetic division, and I can state my answer in quotient form or as a division statement. Now, all of that probably sounds like gobbledygook, so we're going to go on so we can try and make some sense out of that. Uh, so we're going to look at long division, and before I do long division with polynomials, i got to make sure you remember how to do long division with constants. This is going back a ways, so we're going to have a look at how what the thought process is uh, doing long division with constants. So when you did long division way back in elementary school, what you ask yourself in this case, you've got 15, and you want to know how many times 15 goes into this number. Well, if you have a calculator, that's a really easy question. If you don't have a calculator and you're doing long division, you have to do a little bit of thinking step by step. Instead of t just asking how many times does 15 go into this big number, uh, let's break it down into smaller steps and say, how many times does 15 go into 6? Well, it doesn't. How many times does 15 go into 62? Well, that one's a little, 15 will go into 62. And in fact, 15 goes into 62 four times. And that's what you write up here. You write 4. But 15 times 4 isn't actually 62. 15 times 4 is just 60. So you write the 60 down there, and then you subtract them. So you get a remainder of 2 for that step. Uh, but then you have to bring down this 3. So I'm going to bring down the 3. And now we ask ourselves, how many times does 15 go into 23? Or another way you could ask yourself that is, uh, what do I have to multiply 15 by to get as close to 23 as possible? And while 15 times 1 is 15, and 15 times 2 is 30, so 15 times 1 is as close as I can get. Uh, and 15 times 1 is actually not 23, it's only 15. So I put down 15 and now I subtract. And that is in fact 8. Now let's bring down this 4 and we're going to bring it down all the way down here and put a 4 beside the 8. And again we're going to say how many 15's go into 84. Or another way of saying it is what do I have to multiply 15 by in order to get really close to 84 without going over. It's like the price is right. Got to be close, but without going over. Um, so the answer in this case is 5, because 15 times 5 is 75. And again, we're going to put the 75 down here. And now we're going to subtract, and I'm going to get a 9. And then I have to bring down this 5, and I ask myself the same thing again. What do I have to multiply 15 by in order to get as close as I can to 95 without going over? And the answer to that is 6, because 15 times 6 is 90. Now, we've reached the end of all our numbers, and we have a 5 here. So what that means is we have a remainder of 5. So in other words, 15... Uh, times 4,156, and then we've got that remainder of 5, so we add that on, plus 5 is going to give us that initial number, the 6, 62,345. That's what it is. The, if I multiply these two things together and then add on my remainder, I get the original number. So now the process of long division is similar with polynomials. Um, and I'm going to show you this first example here. We want to divide this by this. Now the first thing you have to know is that the polynomial has to be in descending powers of x for this to work out nicely. And if we take a look, we've got 4, 3, 2, and 1, we're good. So since it is in descending powers of x, we can just say, I'm going to put x minus 5 into this. So now I have to ask my questions. My question is, how many times does x minus 5 go into 3x squared, x to the fourth? Well, the answer is it doesn't, because this is a binomial, and there's no way you can put a binomial into a monomial. We've got to at least go into a binomial. And in fact, what I want to do is say, I want to line up this first number. So what do I have to multiply x by 
in order to get 3x to the fourth? Now that's a pretty easy question. First of all, I need a 3, and I need three more x's to get an x to the fourth. And then I have to actually multiply this thing. So I get 3x to the fourth, and then the negative 5 times 3 is going to give me negative 15x cubed. And now I'm going to subtract. And when I subtract, I get 3x cubed. Now you have to be really, really careful. Watch your integers. Negative 12 subtract negative 15 is negative 12 plus 15, which brings us to 3x cubed. Now I bring down this negative 20, negative 20x squared. And now I'm dealing with this down into here, the same way as I did with the long division with numbers. Okay, so what do I have to multiply x by to get 3x cubed? Well, I know I need a 3. And to turn x into x cubed, I need an x squared. And now I actually have to multiply this by this. So I'm going to get 3x cubed, like I wanted. And then 3x cubed times negative 5 is negative 15x squared. And that was 3x squared times negative 5, not 3x cubed. So now I have to subtract. And when I subtract, I have to do negative 20, subtract negative 15, which is negative 20 plus 15, which is negative 5x squared. So now my question becomes again, what do I have to multiply x by to get negative 5x squared? And that's going to give me Get, bring me really close to this, I got to bring this negative 30 down, this negative 30x. That's going to get me really close to this without going over if I just take a look at the first thing, the same as when I did with the other long division. So I know I'm going to need a negative 5 because in order to get a negative 5x squared, I have by, from this x, I have to multiply by negative 5. Um, I also need another x, so I need negative 5x. And now I have to do that multiplication. Negative 5x times this polynomial, and that's what's going to go underneath it. So negative 5x times x is negative 5x squared. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And there's an x there. Now I have to subtract. So negative 30, subtract 25 is going to be negative 55x. And now I bring down this 2, so I have plus 2. And now my question is, what do I have to multiply x by in order to get negative 55x? That one's the easiest one yet. I have to multiply it by negative 55. So I actually make that multiplication, I get negative 55x and then negative 55 times negative 5 is positive 275 and now when I make that subtraction I get negative 273. So that is our remainder, we have a remainder of negative 273. So what does this all mean when I multiply or when I do long division? Well, it means that my original polynomial, if we call this thing p at x for our original polynomial, my original polynomial is the same thing as x minus 5, the thing I divided by, times my answer, 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5x minus 55 plus the remainder, which is negative 273. So I don't write plus negative 273, I just write negative 273. So this original polynomial equals these two polynomials multiplied together, and you could multiply them out if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Um, subtract 273. So you know you're finished when the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. For example, we have a linear divisor, so our remainder will be constant. And there's two ways that we can write this. This is called a quotient form, stating our answer in quotient form. Um, if we say, 
and what we do, rather than writing this little thing for division, we actually write it as a fraction. So we say this over this equals our answer, and then minus the remainder has to be issued as a fraction, where the top part is our actual remainder, and the bottom part is our divisor, what we divided by. And this is called quotient form. So in general, this is our original polynomial, our original polynomial over our divisor. That's what we're dividing by. Um, this is the quotient or the actual answer that we got in our question. The R is the remainder. And this is our divisor again. Okay, so that's the, our, um, our quotient form. And so often we're going to want to conclude with the divisor with a division statement. And the division statement is what I gave you just a second ago. The division statement is the original polynomial. It equals what we divided by times our answer and then add the remainder. And that's what I did on the page previously. So here it is all typed out nice and neat. In function notation we write p of x, again the original polynomial, and I don't really need to write that out again because that's all up here. The original polynomial, this thing here, that's our p at x. Our q at x is the quotient, or in other words the answer. R is the remainder, and this is our divisor in there. So for example, the one that we did looks like this, and I already gave that for you. It looks very much like what I gave you over on this, whoop, it's gone, whoop, wrong way. There we go. This right here is exactly the same thing as what we have here. Now, if you expand the right side, if you expand all of this thing, and I already said that too, but it bears repeating, if you expand this, it will turn out to be this. But this is a lot of work to expand, so I wouldn't do it unless, uh, unless you really wanted to prove a point. So, next question. Divide 6z cubed plus 13z squared minus 9 by this. Now, you must always have the polynomial in descending powers of x, which is fine here, except or powers of the variable, this is z, not x, which is fine here except we're missing the z term. Okay, so since we were missing the z term, we add it in as a zero, and then our process is exactly the same as it was before. We're going to say, how many times, what do I have to multiply 2z by to get 6z cubed? And, well, I need a 2 times 3, and then I have one z, so I need two more, so I need a z squared. And then I have to actually do that multiplication. So I'm going to get 6z cubed, and then 3 times 3 is 9, so plus 9, and I have that z squared. Now I have to subtract down, so I'm going to get 4z squared, and I have to bring down that 0, so we have plus 0z. Now, what do I have to multiply 2z by to get 4z squared? Well, I need a 2, so I get 2 times 2 is 4, and I need another z. And so that's going to give me 4z squared, and then 2z times this 3 is plus 6z. And we're going to subtract, so I get negative 6z. And now I'm going to bring down that negative 9. What do I have to multiply? 2z by in order to get negative 6z. Well, it's got to be negative, and 2 times 3 is going to give me the 6, and I already have a z here, so I don't need a z up here, and now I have to make this multiplication. So that's going to be negative 6z minus 9, and oh, look at that. When I subtract, there is no remainder at all, so remainder 0. So what does that mean as far as a division statement? 
Since the remainder is zero, we know that the divisor went evenly into the polynomial, and that makes it a factor of the original polynomial. So here's our division statement. Our division statement says the original polynomial equals these two things multiplied together plus zero. But we don't need that plus zero there at all. So this thing in factored form is this thing. Example three. One factor of this is x minus five. Factor the polynomial completely. Well, if I know this is x minus five is a factor, I know when I put this in here, I'm gonna come out with a remainder of zero because factors go evenly into things. That's the very definition of a factor. Um, so I'm gonna start by actually doing this division. So x ha has to be multiplied by x squared to get me x cubed. And now I'm actually gonna multiply that. So I'm gonna get x cubed minus 5x squared, and I subtract. Negative 4 subtract negative 5 is positive 1x squared. Now I bring down this minus 11x, and what do I have to multiply x by to get x squared? Well, that's just x. And now I actually make that multiplication, x times x is x squared, x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And I'm going to subtract. Uh, negative 11 subtract negative 5 is going to give me negative 6x. And now what do I, I'll bring down that 30, what do I have to multiply x by in order to get negative 6x? Well, that's negative 6. And now I actually multiply and I get negative 6x plus 30, which is good if I didn't get that, if I ended up with a remainder, then this question is pretty bogus uh, because it already told me this is a factor. And if that's a factor, it means it goes evenly into it. Now, it says factor it completely. Well, what does that mean? Uh, this is in factored form, but it's not completely factored. You always need to check to see if the new quadratic, this quadratic here, factors as well. So here's my um, expression the original polynomial, and I'm just going to call the original polynomial p at x, our original polynomial equals x minus 5 times x squared plus x minus 6. And then there's no remainder on the end. But this thing, we have to see if it factors. And to see if it factors, you have to remember all your rules for factoring. So if you don't know all your rules for factoring, take a look back at my 2D flipped classroom and take a look at factoring again. I'm going to put two brackets down. Um, I need x's at the front of each bracket. Since this is a simple polynomial, I'm simply looking for two numbers that multiply to 6 and have a difference of 1. Multiply to 6 with a difference of 1 is 2 and 3. And since the middle term is positive, that must mean I have more positives than negatives to start with. And now this is fully factored form. If I multiplied this thing out, if I wanted to, I could multiply this thing out and what I would get is this thing here, my original polynomial. Now synthetic division uh, is used if you have a linear divisor. If you have something bigger than a linear divisor, like say you're dividing by a quadratic, you have to use long division. Uh, but synthetic division makes things a whole lot easier than long division. To use synthetic division, you must have a linear divisor where the coefficient of the variable is 1, a polynomial written in descending powers of x. Okay, So we need a coefficient of 1 on the divisor, our polynomial in descending powers of the variable. And if you're missing a power of the variable, you must fill in zeros for the coefficient. So now for synthetic division, and this is going to seem like magic, the proof for synthetic division is actually um, very, very complicated. So I'm not going to show you the proof for it. In fact, I don't understand the proof for it myself. Uh, but we're just going to use synthetic division because it is so, so much easier than long division for most of what we do. So here's the process of synthetic division. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have the descending powers of the variable. This thing is out of order uh, and we're only going to use the coefficients 
So we make this little um, chart here where we just write this down and then we're going to write all of the coefficients on the top part of that. So in this case I've already got them written down. The coefficient, the, the leading coefficient is 1 and then we go, okay there's the squared term so it's 5 and then a negative 4 and then the negative 2 is the constant term. And this number here um, that we put there is what makes the divisor 0. So in this case our divisor is w minus 1. And so what makes the value of w that makes this 0 is 1. So that's why we put that 1 there. Now this multiplies whatever we put here and different from long division we're going to add down instead of subtract. So here we go. Um, we always start by putting a 0 here and that's what it says here. Always start by putting a 0 here and we add down so that's a 1. Then we do 1 times 1 and we put our answer here and we add down. Then we do 1 times 6 and we put our answer here and we add down. And then we do 1 times 2 and we put our answer here and we add down. So now the final numbers here, 1, 6, 2, and 0, they represent the coefficients of the answer. Starting with the power that is 1 less than the original polynomial. So the original polynomial was an x cubed, or sorry, a w cubed, which means that the, co the variable that goes in here is going to be 1 less than that, w squared. The one that goes in here is going to be w. This is going to be the constant. And this right here is the remainder. So, in other words, our answer here, our original, our division statement is p at x, our original polynomial, equals what we divided by w minus 1 times our answer which is going to be 1 w squared and that's a positive 6 so plus 6 w plus 2 and there's no remainder. So there's our division statement. Now we're going to try synthetic division with this from right off the top. Let's see how easy this is as opposed to long division. I put down that thing and then I write in all of my coefficients in descending powers of the variable. So the biggest power is 4, so I'm going to write 6. Uh, then the cubed, so minus 3. Uh, squared is missing, so I have to put in a 0. The plain old uh, exponent 1 is 2, and then our constant term on the end is negative 5. Now what we put out here is what makes this thing 0. So w being negative 3 means that that goes out here. Now I always start by putting a 0 in here and I add down, so that's 6. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18 and then I add down, which gives me negative 21. Uh, now I do negative 3 times negative 21 is positive 63 and I add down, so that's 63. Negative 3 times 63 is negative 187 and I add down, oops sorry, 189 and I add down which gives me negative 187. And negative 3 times negative 187 is 561 and when I add down that gives me 556. Now, so if I, my division statement, the original polynomial, we're going to call it p of x, equals w plus 3, what we divided by, and our answer is going to be 6, now we started with the w to the 4, so this is going to be w cubed minus 21w squared plus 63w minus 187 and then plus the remainder plus 556. Now remember I told you you could only do synthetic division if you had a linear divisor, which in this example we do have, but it has to have, the variable has to have a coefficient of 1, which in this case we got a coefficient of 2.
Now we can still use synthetic division, but we have to modify it slightly. So here's what we're going to do in this case. Since the divisor doesn't have a coefficient of 1, we're going to force out a factor of 2. So we take the factor of 2 out, and this gives us z plus 3 halves. Now this leaves us with a fraction, so you're going to have to work with fractions here. But we're going to do this division in two steps. We're going to do synthetic division with the coefficient first. And then we're going to divide our answer when we get it by 2. And that means just divide everything in our uh, quotient by 2. So now we're going to do this division in two steps. So here's our synthetic division. We're going to write down all the coefficients. So we need a 6. We need a 13. Z to the 1 is missing, so I have to put a 0 down. And then the constant term is negative 9. So over here, we need what makes the divisor, and I'm dividing by the linear coefficient first. So what makes this divisor 0? It's negative 3 halves will make this divisor 0. If I plug negative 3 halves in for z, negative 3 halves plus 3 halves is 0. So now I'm going to put a 0 in here, and I have to add down. So that's 6. Now 6 times negative 3 halves, uh, the easiest way to do this is to say, um, well, 6 divided by 2, I'm going to do the division first. 6 divided by 2 is 3, then times 3 is 9. And of course, there's the negative there, so that's going to be negative 9. And then I have to add down. That's going to give me 4. Now I'm going to do the division first again, because this is, this is actually 4 times uh, negative 3 halves. So I can do this division first, which is basically canceling the 2 into the 4 2 times. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then I multiply it by that negative 3, and that's going to give me negative 6. And then I add down. Now, 6 divided by 2, because I'm basically canceling this 2 into the 6. 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Multiplied by negative 3 is going to give me positive 9. And when I add down, I get a 0. Which means, since this is our remainder, that this thing was a factor of our original polynomial. And if we do our division statement, and I'm going to write it all out this time, 6z cubed plus 13z squared minus 9 is going to equal, oh, actually I missed something there. I forgot about the second step. Um, so let's erase that and say, now I have to divide by 2. So I've got my answer here. I have to divide by 2. So I get 3 2, negative 3. So I divided in two steps. I first divided by the linear, then I divided by the constant. And so now my statement is 6z cubed plus 13z squared minus 9 equals what I divided by, which was this thing up here, 2z plus 3. Even though I did it in two different steps, it's still 2z plus 3 times 6 z squared plus 4z minus 6. And then there's no remainder. And I could try and factor that if I wanted to. Um, but, oops, ooh, and I screwed that up too. I didn't put the right one in there. I want these numbers in there. 3z squared plus 2z minus 3. And there is no remainder, so this is in that factored form. And that's where we're going to leave this video.